Hello, this is Delusional here. I hope you guys are doing well today. So for today's video, I have the patch notes for Tekken 8 for version 0.104. They have essentially done a couple of things to Yoshimitsu that are not exactly not exactly big updates for him, but they're decent in the sense that they're somewhat of quality of life changes and and so and so forth. So for one, they're changing the behavior of 1-1. And 1-1 one, one in no sort sense. They're buffing it, actually. So what they're doing is that they're increasing the collision detection of the hitbox when using the move in certain situations. So there are circumstances where the move would just whiff for whatever reason. I don't know why it happens in either state, but it does. So they're making it easier so that it doesn't, or should I say more precise, so that it doesn't end up having these moments where you'll just whip the move they're doing the same thing with back to two same situation they're a, uh, elevating the issue where it will just whiff they're also fixing the issues with samurai cutter at certain situations where you're at range let's say you're close to the opponent and sometimes there will be moments where it will just whiff not just with samurai cutter but also with running three they're somewhat fixing the hitbox when you're close enough to the target and trying to hit them but they're not increasing their hit range they're just changing or elevating the problems that happens when you're close enough to the target and trying to land these moves they are nerfing one move though they're nerfing the wall standing or they call it here wall rising one two down back two the third hit of the move would actually hit consistently with some characters or in certain situations as well so they're nerfing that move as you see against Brian, it doesn't hit him. So for the next thing, for Dragonfly stance into 4, if this move were to, let's say, land on the opponent, or not really land, but let's say they try to interrupt you, and they attempt to go with a special type of low, like a dig jab, like what Brian just did right there, or any other low specifically, for whatever reason, the low attack will still hit you out of your Dragonfly 4. And they're making it so that it's more accurately, I guess, placed where if you go for Dragonfly Sensor to 4, and the status of when you're doing so considers you to be grounded once you're using the move, for whatever reason. So special lows would still hit you, other lows would hit you as well. But they're changing that so now that it accurately low crushes lows when doing your Dragonfly Sensor to 4. So this is a nice change. Uh, I have had this um, situation happen to me before, though I just can't remember when it happened to me. And now that they're fixing that problem, they're making it so that until he hits the ground, then he is considered to be grounded. But while he's still in the air and attacking, he is still in the air, so low attacks won't hit you. For Asusena, another big change to her, they nerfed her running 3-2 again. Now this move... Instead of being plus 5 on block, it's now plus 2, I believe? It's saying here, yes, plus 2. So they're changing it to plus 2 when you block your, uh, or the, running 3-2 from Asusena. They're also changing, uh, sorry, down forward 1 into 4-1, in which this move will no longer be delayed on a second hit. You can still do it on the third hit, just that you won't be able to do it on the second hit anymore. And they're also making it so that the move, the damage on a second hit, is reduced from 17 to 13. Not only that, you can also step it easily as well, unlike before. So they're also making it so that you can step this move better when the second hit would need to come out. So that's another good change to Asusena because it's already overbearing. And the reason why it's so overbearing is that when using running 3-2... You can then go into your down forward one, into your string, essentially. Making it very difficult to really step her when you wanted to step her. So they're making it a lot easier for you to distinguish between her strings that she's going to be using when you block the running 3-2. So now instead, her only options is to either go for her 10 frames. Or her 12 frame. That's the only option she has. She can still mix you up. She can still do something against you. She can still attempt to go for her down forward one if you don't think that she's going to be going for it and you're just going to be ducking 
her highs. So that's the one thing I will say. Now, of course, if you have a parry onto your character and she's going to go for her strings, you can still beat her. So they essentially made it a lot easier to fight against her if she starts spamming her running 3-2. Not only that, her down back 4 has also been nerfed. Her damage was 17, now it's 13 when the patch comes in. It's going to be coming in in May 8th. So that's another thing that's going to be changing with Aso Sena. This move was super strong. You've seen it in tournaments a lot where they'll just do this move a lot. Whenever they have the chance, they'll use it. And seeing that it does 17 damage, little by little, it's going to start accumulating. And you, you will be destroying your opponent's health bar like it's nothing using this one move but weirdly enough they're also buffing down back three so they're actually increasing the damage of this move from 12 to 14 guessing to make it so that you can use this more often in the fight than just using your down back four instead they're also changing the 2-1 move as well the second hit of this move has a increased recovery time of four frames and they're also making it so that the second hit can be stepped easily instead of how now if you attempt to step the last hit, it'll still hit you. So they're changing that and they're also making it so that on frame advantage on block has been changed from minus three to now minus seven on the last hit. And that on hit, it's been changed from plus seven to plus three. So now she can't really frame trap you look to heck and you can't really do anything to her. Her one one has also been nerfed as well to where now it can be easily stepped as well on the first hit. The frame advantage on block on the second hit has been changed from minus nine to minus 10. So now you can actually punish her if she ends up going for a one one with a 10 frame move. And the distance from the opponent on hit or on block of the second hit has been reduced as well. So now let's say if I were to reset, maybe this move will reduce significantly so it won't actually hit. On two back steps, maybe it would whiff on the second hit. Maybe. For Dragonov, another big change to him is that they're nerfing a lot of his lows, but they're also semi buffing his mids and highs. So like like down forward one, they're buffing this move. They're increasing the phenomenon where the opponent could crouch to evade subsequent high attacks after being hit by down forward one unnaturally quickly has been corrected. So they're buffing that one. They're also buffing forward three into one plus two as well. They're uh, supposedly they're increasing the recovery time of the opponent for three frames. And the advantage on block has been changed from minus six to minus three. So again, making it so that if, let's say they block this move, he has more time to either step moves if he wants to. They're nerfing though his down forward three plus four. They're changing the damage from 23 to 19. His down four has a weird behavior where if the opponent is facing down in the position that the reaction on hit has been corrected. I don't know what that looks like. If I were to actually do it now. Uh, I see now. So instead of actually switching them from this side now instead they'll just stay to that side. But it's saying that it's, an, well, it's not really a nerf. No or buff. So I'm guessing they're going to make it so that when you still hit them they'll still be facing down I'm guessing that's what it is now a big nerf is his hatchet kick his hatchet kick now has a decrease of movement not now though so I just say when the patch comes in we'll have a decrease of movement so let's say if you're one back step away from maybe not one back step let's say like maybe here you won't be able to use this repeatedly because maybe the move will have less range less head range essentially so they're nerfing that and they're making it so that instead of being plus seven on hit they're changing it to plus three instead so he again can't really just bombard you with all of his best strings while he's plus seven on hit and also while the opponent is grounded if he hits them with this move they'll be pushed further away from the dragon off unlike now which it's still further away but not as much as they're gonna be changing it in the patch notes they're also changing his full crouch down forward 1-4 this move on counter hit will knock down the opponent giving you access to his 4 on sneak now instead if they were to change it that is 
it will just work as if it was it was the same as his full crouch one into four down four down one into four but it won't land into a knockdown anymore so even on counter hit it'll just act the same way as it regularly does so that means that you will have more opportunities to defend the dragon off instead of just being pushed around like he does now his running two it's also been changed, as well as the quick version, which is the blue spark version, which I'm having trouble doing right now. Come on, there we go. That's also been changed. So the frame advantage on block has been changed from plus six to plus four. The damage when quickly inputting the running two has been changed from 30 damage to 26 damage. The damage of the standard version, which is just the regular version, not the blue spark version, it's also been changed. The damage is 25, changing it to 22. And they're going to be changing the, the overall discrepancies of the damage notations in sample combos. So if you go into your sample combos, you can see his running two combos. And they'll be changing the damage for that since they're going to be changing the overall damage of the move. Not only that, they're also going to be heavily changing the overall damage of his running four. So his running four now will be changed into, if I can find it right here, the final kick attack which triggered the tornado has been changed from 36 to 28 damage. And due to the damage scaling applied in wall combos, the actual damage will decrease by approximately two to three compared to previous versions and practical combat situations. So this is nice. Uh, Dragonov's damage was abhorrently too high for what it was. Already he has so many advantages when it comes to his moves, and now he has a wall combo that he can perform that does significant amounts of damage. No, that's a bit too unfair for a character to have. For Devil Jin, the only real big change that they have done to him in terms of nerfs is his Heat Smash. So as you already know, if you go into your Heat Smash and you attempt to sidestep this move, it would still manage to hit you. Or if you try to step and block, then it will still manage to block it. But what you want is to evade it. As you see, the move hits for fairly long range. So now they're changing it to that you're able to step this move. It doesn't have the same amount of tracking that it does during the update. So that's one other thing that they're going to be fixing with Devil Jin. For Feng Wei, another bullshit character in this game, he enters into Heat Burst. His 3 plus 4 has massive amount of advantages that he can use against you. He can spam this if he wants to, as long as he just press 3 plus 4, and allows access to a lot of mixed up potential, and you're kind of forced to make a guess. So now they're making it so, it says from here, they're nerfing it. The issue with the opponent upon blocking this attack and crouching would inadvertently get hit with back facing opponents. One, the attack when you're back turned, that is, has been rectified. If the kick does not make contact with the opponent, the shock waves that the shake the grounds occurs. However, the attack hitbox of the shock wave has been reduced. So they're changing the shock wave range of this move significantly. I don't know why I still hit them there. So you see right there, you see how much range it hits the Brian while they're grounded? So they're gonna be reducing that. Though to on my opinion, I don't see how that is a nerf, because even if they do nerf the shock wave. If he gets close enough, he can still do it. So it's not like he can still shockwave you. Either way, changing the recovery frames inflicted on the opponent upon getting hit by the shockwaves has been reduced by 3 frames. So, hopefully this means that if he does use the move and you manage to block it, that since you recover... It says here, the recovery has been reduced by 3 frames. Hopefully this means that you're able to actually maneuver away from Feng Wei when he attempts to go for one of his mix-up options. Hopefully that's what it means in this patch note. They're also nerfing his back 1 plus 2. Uh, the nerf to this move is that in certain situations when if you block this move, you couldn't really punish him. Because this move is actually minus 18, was it? Let me actually check. No, minus 19. At minus 19, depending on the range of this move, you won't be able to punish him directly. I don't know who is capable of not punishing Feng Wei directly, but it says here that they're nerfing it. So they're making so the collision detection with the opponent has been adjusted, mitigating cases where the opponent's punish will not connect. So it could be either be that during the range of it, or it could be in circumstances where if you're near the wall, 
and if you block this move, it would weirdly push you away from the wall so you won't be able to punish Feng Wei. Then they're also nerfing his up forward 3 uh, damage from 20 to 16. They're also nerfing his 4 forward 3 to 35 to 33, as well as while well, using back turn stance as well. His wall rising 1 plus 2, the input window for punch parry has been changed from 3 to 8 frames to 5 to 8 frames. Uh, yeah, I guess that's nice. And then they're also nerfing his full crouch down forward 4 into 1. They're inputting the second hit. The recovery frames inflicted on the opponent upon block for the first hit has been increased by 4 frames. This change ensures that if the opponent attempts a counterattack after blocking the first hit, they won't be hit by the second hit. The damage has been adjusted from 10 to uh, 15 to 13 to 10. So they're nerfing the- well, wait, they're actually buffing the damage of the first hit. But they're nerfing the last hit from 15 to 10. Okay. This adjustment aims to give tactical benefits for to using the move in ways other than just always inputting both attacks. So I guess if you don't want to just input, let's say, so instead now if you want to input just the first hit you can instead of just having to go for the all both hits instead. So that's what they're trying to say here. So from what I can see, the nerfs to him is significant, at least from damage wise. Uh, the biggest thing that I care about is the 3 plus 4 while he's in heat state. It's way too strong for how it works. So that's essentially it. There really isn't anything else that's big that's happening in the patch. So weirdly enough, they excluded Nina and Victor in the game. Uh, uh, June also has received some nerfs as well. Her heat smash, when she attempts to go for her heat smash, the second hit can now be easily stepped. So if you step the first hit, let's say, of uh, the heat smash, the second hit won't just immediately track you. So at least that's what, that's what they're saying in the patch notes. I believe I'm saying this correctly. I'm going to go into it. It says... The tracking ability of the second hit has been adjusted to prevent it from tracking opponents who sidestep the first hit. The amount of health recovered on block has been reduced. Instances where the move failed to hit consecutively when done from further away has been elevated. So they're changing that. And of course other moves have been bu um, been buffed as well for whatever reason. And nerfed as well when it comes to your Kazama powers. So instead here they're saying we have revised the health consumption rate adjusting so that some of the consumed health no longer remains as recoverable, recoverable health. Additionally, when entering the heat state, we have adjusted so that there is a decreased health consumption only, removing situations where there are absolutely no disadvantages to using Kazama's power. However, the use of Kazama's power will not result in self-KL due to health consumption. So, I'm going to assume this means that when she, whenever she uses one of her moves, so moves like this, for example, they use up health. So if they use up health, I'm going to assume that they're going to make it so that she doesn't have as much recoverable health, or they're going to eliminate the chances that she can has. She's going to have any sort of recoverable health when using moves like this that have this effect. But I don't think that's the case. I think that they're just going to make it so they're going to reduce the amount of recoverable health and other things too alongside uh, June. Okay, now that's actually it. So there are other changes to in the patch notes, big changes in fact, like Leroy has been massively buffed. I feel that he deserved it really. I won't talk about it, I'll just leave the patch notes for you guys if you want to see more about what the patch notes entails. They also buffed Asuka a bit as well in the game, so now she's a little bit more favorable. Zafina has been massively buffed as well uh, several times in in her moves as well. And the biggest thing that I really like with this change, and not with this, just the balance changes with the characters, but also with the overall behaviors or mechanical or system issues with the game. For example, when it comes to the online, they're going to circumvent some of the issues with the frame drops or the frame problems that happen with rollback in the game. So they're going to be doing something about that. I don't know how significant that will be, how the changes will look like once it's live on May 8th. So what I wanted to do was that I posted up onto my channel that if I was going to continue doing the relative foods and challenges with all the other characters in the game, or was I going to continue with the overall rankings with Yoshimitsu instead and try to reach Tekken King. Now, I contemplated when I made this video that if I should just do that, right? And I still want to do the Yoshimitsu, you know, ranking to Tekken King. But then I thought to myself, wouldn't it be better to just reach Tekken God and then 
do the other characters later down the line because eventually all of the characters will, will reach Fujin if I hit Tekken God and then instead do another series where I try to reach Tekken King with all the characters in mind but if I do that then I will then have to work on reaching Tekken King with the characters that I already hit Fujin with so I'm not really sure what to do I'm gonna ask a question to my supporters to my subs to what they think what I should do next because even though I made this post I don't know if that's where I'm gonna be heading to so instead I'll just leave it to you guys and I'll ask this question would you prefer to see me hit Tekken King with Yoshimitsu and then continue on with the road to Fujin challenges with the rest of the cast or would you want me to hit Tekken God if I can hit it with Yoshimitsu that would eventually make all the characters that I haven't played yet to Fujin and then just do a Tekken King series with the rest of the other characters that I have not done yet because I'm not sure if I'm gonna be going with having to repeat myself with the other characters that I have already reached Fujin with and then play them as well so you guys can let me know in the comments and then I'll then figure out what I'll do next so yeah if you guys like what you watched give it a like Subscribe if you want to see more of my shit and stay tuned for more.